In today's Daily Dose of Math, we're looking at stem and leaf tables. A stem and leaf table is a way of presenting data that makes it easier to read. On the left side of this chalkboard, I have a set of data and it has the title scores. There's only 12 values in it, and I'm going to put those 12 values into my stem and leaf table. The first thing I'll do is put a title, and I'll use the same title, scores. And then the first value I have is a 12. The way I put that in is I put a 2 here beside the 1. The 1 in between the bars is the first digit of a two-digit number, and then the 2 that I write here is the second digit, and I can read that it's 12. The second number is 15, so I put a 5. Now I'm reading the data, I can say 12 is my first value, 15 is my second value. I keep reusing the number in between the bars as the first digit. And I have a 17, so I put a 7. Now I have a 23, I put it here, but I have a second 23. What do I do? I put another 3 here, and the person reading the table can see, okay, there's a 23, and there's another 23. So we can deal with that. 28 is the next value, and then 31, and then 51. So I don't have any numbers in the 40s, so I'm just skipping past this line, and I'm writing 51. When you read this, you see the 31. When you see this, you have to realize there is no number 4, there is no number that starts with 4. We're just going from 31 to 51. 55, 56, 56, 59, we know what to do. 55, 56, 56, 59. I now have all of my data in, and I can read it easily. Now, some people might think, it's easy to read this. This isn't really easier. Once you get used to it, it's just as easy. But is it easier? Well, we only have 12 values this time. What if we had 120 values? Listed this way, it might be quite difficult to see what we're looking for in 120 values, whereas presented in this way, it'll be easier to read. In my second example, I actually have two sets of data. This is the grades on a quiz where the highest possible mark was 50 for two teachers named Don and Eli. Both teachers have 11 values, but it's not necessary for them to have the same amount of values. But we want to put them together on the same stem and leaf table so that we can compare them easily. So let's start with Don. I'm going to put Don on this side. And his first number is a 4. 4 is not a two-digit number. That's why this time I had to put a 0 between the bars so that I can write a 4 next to it and we realize that 0, 4 means 4. And that's our first value. We also have an 8, so the 8 goes here. And now we're doing the same thing as we did with our first example. 17 is next. Then there are no numbers in the 20s. 34, 35, 39. And we have five values in the 40s. 40, a second 40, 41, and two 47s. We can read our data. Notice how I show a 2 even though I don't have any numbers in the 20s. And this time I'm showing a 5 even though I don't have any numbers in the 50s. But I can read my data and I get the same set of 11 numbers as I would have gotten if I read this. Now Eli is going to be on this side. And his numbers will look a little different. First of all, he doesn't have any one-digit numbers, so his lowest number is a 12. I write the 2 here beside the 1, and I have to read this backwards from right to left. So the first number for Eli is a 12, the next number is a 27, then a 28. So I'm actually putting the 28, which is bigger than the 27, further to the left, because I'm not really reading from left to right. I'm going to read this from right to left. 12, 27, 28. Then we have a 36, 41, lots of numbers in the 40s, 43, 45, 46, 47, 49, and we have a 50. There's a student in Eli's class who got a perfect grade, and that's why I had to have a 5 between the bars in this table, because one of the sets of data that are showing on the table had a number that started with a 5. 
So it looks a little strange, and the left side with Eli does look a little bit more difficult to read than the right side, but all of the techniques for making a stem and leaf table and reading it are things that quickly become easy once the student has practiced them just a little bit, and then it becomes very convenient to use. This has been today's daily dose of math about the stem and leaf table. Please remember to like this video, and if you're not subscribed yet, click on the subscribe button.